It's time once again for our weekly devotional. I sure hope these devotionals are helpful to you and give you some encouragement during the week. I decided, I've been referencing uh, several times in the last couple of weeks, Jeremiah chapter 2. I had preached a sermon years ago on Jeremiah chapter 2, and I have never forgotten it. The text is really special to me. So I thought I would take us back to that section just to remind you of the text, because it's been I have brought it up because of our time in the book of Micah. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holiness to the Lord the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. So God speaks through Jeremiah to say, there was a day when you as a people sought after God. And it was a great moment. And of course, it was in their early days. As I was reading that, I was thinking of how as we grow older, as, as we walk longer with God, things change like it does in any relationship, in any situation. The early days are different than the latter days. The early days are different than the intervening middle years. So in those early days, as a people coming out of Egypt, God noted that the people sought him. And then, of course, things changed. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 4, he turns the discussion or the words differently. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord. What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? So God, of course, tells the people at that time that they presently are sinning, they are idolaters, they're not faithful, and their fathers got that started. The Israelites in the time of Jeremiah were a product of their forefathers. And they were not being faithful. And so God said, what did your fathers find? What injustice did they find in me? Then he gives us a clue as to a people of God, that we need people in our midst, whether it's preachers, teachers, parents, uh, people we respect in the faith. We need people in our lives that will speak truth. Sometimes truth is spoken with a question. And the question can be obvious, but it needs to be verbalized. So here's what it says, Jeremiah 2, 6. Neither did they say, where is the Lord? So God says to the people in, in Jeremiah's time, your forefathers began to uh, backslide. 
That's actually a biblical term. I know it is in the King James. They began to backslide. They, they began to get off the beaten path of faithfulness. And they didn't notice, if they did notice the absence of God's presence, they didn't say, where is the Lord? Which, of course, the way it's spoken in Jeremiah 2, 6, they should have said, where is the Lord? Have we turned our back to him? Have we taken a path where he is not? Is he not with us? That should be a very huge question from the people of God. Is he not with us? We need him with us. Well, they didn't ask, where is the Lord? Where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? And then, of course, Jeremiah begins, and I'll skip all of that, where he just rehearses all the things God did. And that, that, ought, that should have led their forefathers to say, we need our Lord. Look at what he did for us historically. And we're leaving him. We're running from him. Verse 8. The forefathers didn't ask, where is the Lord? But verse 8, it says, the priests did not say, where is the Lord? So the people should have asked, but even more so, the priest, the, of course, in the Old Testament, very formal separation from priests and people. Well, those priests, that's their job. That's their life to go between God and the people. They didn't say, where is the Lord? Then it says, and those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. So God is suggesting or saying, he's declaring, because it says twice in Jeremiah 2, thus says the Lord. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? Which, of course, implies they didn't care. They didn't notice. They had become dull in their spiritual sensitivity. So, as I read that as a pastor, as a preacher, uh, I feel like part of my calling is to be alert spiritually. And I'm not the only one in our midst to do that, but certainly a pastor, a preacher, a person called into the ministry should not become dull in their sensitivity to God's presence, God's absence. And then he goes on to say the prophets prophesied by Baal. They went from being prophets of God to being prophets of Baal. What a horrible shift, change for the people of God, for the prophets to do that. So we go down to verse 13. Great passage that says it all. This is hundreds of years old, but it's current. Here's what God says in Jeremiah 2, 13. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves, cut themselves, dug themselves, cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So we have two evils, and look how it works. First, it's forsaking God, losing the appetite for God's Word, growing dull in seeking God, getting used to not 
hearing from God. Getting comfortable with not seeking God. So it's forsaking. So, you know, seldom is it a one-time click of the switch. I'm going to forsake the Lord. No, it's a gradual backsliding, cooling off, not being very vigilant. And the next thing you know, you have turned from God. That's forsaking him. But there's a double evil here. Not only did they forsake God, then they went to work and did their own work, and they started digging water wells. Now this is symbolic. Digging a well. They left the God of living water. They left the God that the water is an eternal flow. To imagine how ridiculous that is. To turn from the God, it says here, of living water and then start digging and finding your own water. Now, you might find the water. It's not very good. But it says here in Jeremiah 2.13, they dug themselves cisterns that can hold no water. So the water you capture dissipates. It's not available. What a picture of futility, of ignorance, of such sin to, and such clouded judgment to turn from the fountain of living water to dig your own well and it cannot hold water. Thus says the Lord. I am in these days real aware of how the word of the Lord is not treasured by a lot of people. And in these modern days where this ancient book continue, we continue to get further and further away in real time when these things happened and when they were recorded. And it is our privilege and our call to stay tethered, linked, connected, drawn to the eternal word. Now we live in a day where a lot of people have no concern for thus saith the Lord. That doesn't mean a lot. In fact, it doesn't mean anything for a lot of people. The tragedy is in the church, there's a cooling off. There's a uh, moving away from this, we have to have the word. We must hear the word. And people are thinking their own thoughts and doing their own thing. So I pray this uh, look at Jeremiah 2 puts those things in perspective. I hope that you are taking care of yourself. I, f I know for in my own life, the pandemic, the, uh, the effects of trying to be careful and, and doing what uh, the medical community recommends, isolates us, uh, limits us, and I have found that it takes away some of our uh, markers of how we live, fence posts, mile, mile markers, where am I, these patterns of life, these moments of life that have always marked our path, our experience. We don't have a lot of those right now. So you really have to find on your own you really have to discipline yourself to find sustenance and strength, encouragement, inspiration. You got to know when you're really getting down, how can you take care of yourself? It doesn't mean there's no one available to help you, but in these days, you really got to take care of yourself and, and realize there's ups and downs 
in this pandemic experience. We've been at it long enough to know that. Now we pray for the vaccine, whether you take a vaccine or not, that the public, the vaccine makes its way and makes a, a difference in the world population all the way to the local population, that it actually affects the numbers of cases. So 90 days from now, perhaps, we start hearing these things uh, make a difference, and we get encouraged by that. Uh, that day's coming. We just don't know when that day is. In the meantime, may we trust the Lord, depend on Him, day by day, the Lord's Prayer, give day daily bread. We're now being... Uh, ex we're experiencing what the early people did a long time ago, where there was daily bread, daily existence, one day at a time. We are so, we have so much stuff and modernization that we think in terms of weeks and months and years of provision and security. We're at the uh, Lord's Prayer days. Give me this day. Thank you for the daily bread. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for that. I pray, Lord, you'd grant us the, the, the gift of encouragement from the Holy Spirit. We would be mindful of your word and your encouragement. And Father, we do pray for our nation, what all's going on, but vaccine to make a difference and for the knowledge we're gaining to make a difference in this pandemic so that people can relate to people, we can connect with people, minister to one another, and be about the ministry you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.